Welcome to another episode of I Love Youth Work. We're here with Lloyd Russell Moyle, MP. Yo, and welcome to another episode of I Love Youth Work. Hi, welcome hey. to I Love Youth Work. Welcome to another episode of welcome I Love Youth Work. Welcome to another edition of I Love Youth Work. Yeah. That's the name here. I Love Youth Work. Lloyd, welcome to I Love Youth Work. Welcome. Hello, welcome. Thank you. Um, for those of the uh, youth workers that are watching from around the globe, um, can you tell us about your experience with youth work and how you're supporting youth work? Uh, so, uh, my first proper job um, when I left school was as an administrator at the youth service. And then um, my, uh, I took a little bit of work at the local youth centre um, in my constituency where I'm now the MP. Uh, then I was um, appointed as a participation worker at the National Youth Agency. So okay. I spent my time travelling around the UK talking about how we could get young people involved in participation in design and delivery of programmes in youth uh, services, but also in all services. I did a lot of work with CAFCAS during that time, mm -hmm. um, which is the Family and Court Ad Advisory Service. Um, uh, and uh, lots of other kinds of things. I then was also the chair of the Woodcraft Folk, which is a voluntary youth oh, organisation, yes. socialist scouts, um, if you want a quick kind of description of it. <laughs> um, I became, I was also uh, the vice chair um, before that uh, and over some of that time of the British Youth Council oh. and I was the vice president of the European Youth Forum, which is the federation of all the youth organisations in Europe. And then, latterly, I was a consultant at the UN on youth policy for um, uh, post-conflict countries, mainly across Sri Lanka, but also um, uh, doing stuff around the SDGs and uh, youth work. I've worked on and off on the SDGs and on sustainable development for about uh, 15 years because Woodcraft Oak did a lot of that youth and environment, youth and sustainable development. Way ahead of their time, yeah. So, that is my background in Seasoned. youth Seasoned. work. Seasoned, so you know your stuff. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, when I got elected as Parliament, YMCA and BYC, uh, so um, two big youth organisations in Britain, who are the Secretariat for the All-Party Group for Youth, yes. came to me and said, look, we know you, Lloyd, I'd, you know, and with these hats, I sat on Council of Europe bodies. I sat on. Mm. We had lots. We had a lot of meetings around um, the history of youth work. That I chaired a number of those meetings. Mm. They said, "We know you. So, can you be the chair of your party group for youth?" So I said, "Yes, I'll do that, but on one condition." And the one condition is that it wouldn't just be a youth participation structure, but I wanted it to start looking at some of the big issues that were affecting young people. And one of those things was youth work. So the first right. inquiry that we've done is really the state of youth work in Britain. Mm -hmm. So with other MPs, Conservatives, particularly um, Ben Bradley, who's a conservative, new Conservative, youngish MP in Mansfield, we've gone up and down the country to cities, to some rural areas, to see what's happened to youth work. And with the National Youth Agency, we've had a report um, developed uh, where we've asked for submissions from people around Britain um, uh, and we've had over 100 submissions. Yes. Uh, we've produced the provisional findings so far, and they range from everything such as youth work is an educational process, mm -hmm. and it needs to be understood in an educational framework, mm -hmm. and therefore, at the moment in Britain, it's put under sport and gambling. Yes. It needs to move from sport and gambling, and it should go back to the Department for Education. Um, uh, to recommendations that we should have standards and Ofsted should be involved, to saying that we should just do a basic audit of what is on offer. Because in 2011, the government scrapped the youth work audit, which used to see at least where the baseline was. We have no idea now, but most studies show about one billion was cut from youth services so far. That is... Um, that is 70% uh, plus of the budget. And what has replaced it is a national citizenship service, which um, over five years will spend about two billion, so you know, kind of um, uh, far less than what was spent previously on youth services. And whilst it's a very good service for those that take part in it, it's a four-week program in the summer. Mm -hmm. It is effectively a glorified 
cross between a glorified summer camp and a Duke of Edinburgh's program. Mm -hmm. um, and no, no problem with that. Young people need that, and that's important for a lot of young people. But it doesn't provide the day-in, day-out support. It's a one-shot yeah, wonder, a and it's not really youth work in its holistic understanding. It's youth activity, and it's youth citizenship, which is an important part of youth work, but it's a very discreet part of it. A very expensive holiday programme. I mean, yes, it's, well, it's four well, weeks long. Yeah. It's, it's four weeks long, and uh, it costs an average of about two grand per participant. Mm. The scouts, to give you an idea, because they do holiday mm. programs, and I often use the scouts as a kind of baseline because a lot of people immediately can conceptualise what you're mm. talking about. But you could say a local church group, a local woodcraft group, yeah. bunch of youth organisations do that kind of program, and for the scouts, five hundred pounds is enough to print a new place for three years worth of um, programmes for one young person. Right. So if we gave the Scouts £500, they say they could provide the week-in, week-out group nights and their summer camps for three years for a new young person. And we're spending, um, uh, we're, well, we're spending four times that on a four-week programme at the moment. So, so, and actually National Citizenship Service hasn't been able to reach out, so it's now have to go to the Scouts mm. to ask them to start recruiting. But of course, it doesn't give the scouts the full amount of money. It gives them so there's some problems there. But as a principle, everyone would want to continue youth activity and youth citizenship stuff, and would probably want to keep the badge national citizenship service just make it work a bit more effectively. Well, expand but, on it, yeah. but put that to one side. Even if you expanded and did all the bells and whistles and got it more efficient, you're still losing a lot of that stuff, which is from the, yeah. the universal youth service the outreach youth worker that's able to engage in communities. Because remember, youth workers were not just people that worked with young people alone. It was about young people's place mm. in the community. Yes. And so some of the work was actually about the community as well. Mm. It was about Families. actually yeah, yeah. supporting yeah. that wider community to understand that journey the young person is going through. Yes. And some young people go through a very easy journey mm. through life. And their involvement and interaction with statutory youth services might be very minimal. And other young people, it's quite intensive. Uh, the problem, what we've seen at the moment, is with all these cuts, then you only now get acute services. So you only get services when a young person has tried to commit suicide. Not before, yes. but they have to have tried. You only get services, which is a rather sick kind of thing when you think about it, you, have, you can have a young person coming to you in crisis and you kind of have to say, well, I'm sorry, we don't help unless you've actually tried to slash your, slash your wrist. It's a, I mean, it's, a it's, ludicrous it's, message. It's a really it? horrible message. Yeah. But putting that aside again, we only have those acute services. And that means that you can maybe not have met crisis point in a number of indicators, mental health, educational attainment, you know, kind of um, physical health, etc. But you might be almost on the failing point of all of those different indicators and actually collectively put them together, you might actually really need some intervention. Because if you don't, one of them will go. And once one of them goes, it will be like dominoes. They'll all go down. So let me ask you a follow-up question. And that has been removed then. completely, and that's what how, we need back. How do we get to that point where politicians, funders, uh, philanthropists perhaps re recognise the power and the value of that preemptive work, to, to the preventative work, to stop things getting... To spend a little bit of money mm -hmm. now to prevent them spending a huge bit of money further down the line. Spend a penny now to save a pound <laughs> later. Uh, it seems to make sense to youth workers, to anybody who's involved in working with young people, particularly yeah. young people in crisis, we know this. And yet... The, the, the problem is it's not easy to measure because you're trying to measure a negative, aren't you? Well, didn't we, have, we have intervened mm -hmm. and we've stopped something happening. Well, would have that happened anywhere? We, no one knows because you don't want these happen, things to happen. And some of the problem has been that we focus very much on hard outcomes, you know, kind of how many young people do you have not in education and employment. Now, those things you will still need to measure. You need to have some measurable framework. But one of the tasks is to go and engage with politicians. And my view is youth work is political, and youth work is disruptive as well. It is political in the sense of it is about creating young people, uh, empowering young people to be able to change the communities that they live in, and sometimes to fit into the communities they live in. And on the other side, it is disruptive in, in the sense of it's sometimes challenging the communities themselves to yep. fit within young people. Now, if, and that is a highly political message, if we are able to engage politicians in that to understand it better, then I think you will see better support and resource for it. And the truth is that a lot of youth workers have, and youth centres have kept 
politicians at arm's yes. reach. And with National Citizenship Service, to give them the credit, what do they do? The MPs are invited to every <coughs> award ceremony. The MPs are on the Dragon's Den. You know, the young people don't need to see the MPs. It's as much as a PR process for the MP <laughs> if, with the MPs as it is anything to do with the young people. When I went and visited Nottinghamshire, I found that they, the council was rebuilding one of their youth centres, spending you know kind of a few hundred thousand on one youth centre. That another youth centre had been rebuilt. Now, of course, they slashed some of the services in Nottinghamshire. Mm. Don't get me wrong; it's not a, um, it's not perfect. But actually, out of most of the areas that we saw, it was the one that still had open access youth service, unlike right. many others. And one of the reasons was there is they say. They are every single event, they're inviting their local councillors on every single event, they're showing them. And the politicians become part of that youth work community as well. So they know they can't cut it. Um, so I think that that's one way that we get there, because we're going to always fall down on trying to get the hard indicators. Yeah. So we need to have the soft yeah. relations. Yeah. And youth work is, isn't it, about that relationship building. So let's do some Absolutely. of it politically as well. As, and so one of the things I wanted to do over the summer and over Youth Work Week and we're going to build this over the next few years, mm -hmm. is to get a programme where you, MPs can spend a few days at yeah. a youth centre yeah. doing youth work in the communities right. when they're on recess, so they start to understand it better. Right. So let's start building that so that we integrate it more. So, so the, youth, the youth workers that are watching this now, and some of them are very familiar with this, some of them might have lost their jobs, some of them are quite fearful about what kind of season, or like the winter season, quite harsh, winter that we're going through in the UK. It's different in, you know, the colleagues that we've had here. We're sitting here with our colleagues from throughout the globe. So they have different experiences of, like we're sitting in Malta, they have quite a lot of uh, governmental support and policies and professionalization. What message do you have in terms of, for uh, youth workers that are in the UK, that they can support the, the things that you're doing? What would be a, a message of, of what they could do to help? Well, the Labour Party, from a political party point of view, has of course made a commitment that when we get in, we will re-establish a status of youth service, we will ensure that it is um, uh, funded, and we're now working on calculations for that. So there's some technical pieces of work that need to be done, which is around working out what is that calculation of money that is needed. Yes. So youth workers having ideas around that, if they're interested in policy level, feed that into the Labour Party. On a more cross-party basis, yeah. that element of reaching out to politicians, making sure that we um, are really engaging in activities. So if you are a youth worker running activities, get your young people to invite the MP to come and do an open day. Mm -hmm. Now, it's win-win, isn't it? You get to see the MP, speak to them, the young people get to speak to them, and you get a picture in the paper, the MP can say they're engaging in the community. Don't picture it as some scary youth panel, youth in... No, just say, we want to, you to come to open up our youth day, do some celebratory things, do the other stuff on the side as well. But first of all, engage with your MP. Now we know there are some Conservatives that are really good. You know, Alistair Burt, Ben Bradley, people that will come on these activities, Gillian Keegan, um, you know, kind of, uh, uh, um, there's a list of them, Peter Bottomley, a number of them from my area. We need to extend that out, particularly if you've got a Conservative MP, reach out to them, engage them, make them understand why it's really important and why some core funding is important, not just project funding and drip feeding. And youth workers know how to do this because that's what they do when they're working for and with yes, young people. Work, exactly. With, with, with imagine, imagine politicians are reluctant young people that don't really want to engage. That's the hat you need to put on. And so you need <laughs> to business. work to engage them and bring them in. And it's not going to work straight away. Some MPs yeah. will run like a mile but constantly drip, drip, and make them feel like you're not going to actually ask much from them. I mean, we've all done this with young people, haven't we? We're not asking anything from you. Just come through the door. Let's have a cup of tea, or Just not a cup of tea. Let's have a drink, or let's, let's, what do you want? What do you want to do? You know, kind of, and have that conversation with MPs. And it, you, you can mirror that same conversation that you've had with, with young people. So I hope you've enjoyed um, this short amount of time we've had in conversation with Lloyd. Lloyd's contact details and 
and how you can contact him and support the campaign. You know, on our behalf, we've spoken to many politicians. It's really refreshing to see a politician who is educated and knowledgeable about our youth work field. And passionate, clearly. Yeah, and you know, that, that will make a difference. And you know, like, you know, from a personal level, if you know young people, or if you're a youth worker, this might be the time to step up into politics, to be able to get our voices heard. You know, as a tribe, we've always had the begging bowl, or we've tried to um, activate it, or waited for things to change. Um, Lloyd is a great example from us, for us all to be able to step up um, and get get our stuff into policy and start making things that we can have a long term uh, profession and a tribe. Um, thanks a lot for sparing that time, Lloyd. Really yeah, appreciate no that. There's no Thank time you. right now. Step up, Good. get involved. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. Thanks for watching. Cheers.